What's going on guys, Louis Lituka here, certified personal trainer, clinical nutritionist and life coach and founder of ConquerWealth.net and today's big word I want to talk about is depression. Now I know 100% everybody watching this video knows somebody that's either had depression um, in the past, has it now or, or suffers from it themselves and it's just one vicious, horrible thing that exists in this world and you know what, I wish we could just eradicate it naturally. It seems to be getting bigger, more prevalent um, in our modern day society. Why is that? You know, I could do a whole other video on that, but we look at modern day technology, uh, overuse of computers, kids growing up on iPads, looking at addictions, food addictions, alcohol, coffee, and just that whole keeping up with the Joneses nonsense that we go through in, in the western world especially nowadays and there's a whole array of reasons i could go a lot deeper on that but the purpose of this video today is actually how to get rid of depression now i'm not going to sit here as a, a a certified cbt coach which which i am and a life coach and say that i can cure your depression because there's so much of this shit um out there people saying yeah 10 steps to cure depression and Man, it, there's a multi-level approach to depression. It, there's not a one-size-fits-all. Not everyone has depression for the same reasons. And for that reason, we, we've got to be really careful about sitting down and, and listening to these gurus or these counsellors and health coaches say, right, come over here and do you know, what I'm doing. This is going to make you a hundred times better. Do some like emotional freedom technique or come over this side and just do CBT, or come over this side and just do, do nutrition, that's a cause of your depression. That That's not always true. For some people, it might work. Some people might get massive release from, from CBT or, or, or from improving their diet, and they might just have a chemical imbalance, for example, lack of magnesium, and they might feel better, but often not the case. And what I like to have for myself, because I am someone that has suffered and is probably susceptible to still getting those negative thoughts, even though I don't let them really attack me anymore because of my approach. Um, I like to hit it from a multi-level perspective. Now, what I'm going to give you here is some tools to to basically help with your depression. And, and if you're lucky, it might actually cure it. It might feel, make you feel good enough to not really get it back often. Every time it does start to creep in, you go, no, bang, I know it's coming. I can see it coming. And in, in my opinion, as I said, it, it's about following the steps. And th th these are in no particular order. Step number one is exercise. Guys, I know we've heard it all before, but exercise, it just has a fucking huge benefit on making you feel much better. You're going to, you know, by aerobic training, high, you know, long durance aerobic training especially is good, long cardio training, um, or high intensity weight training, these things are going to make you feel so much better by the releasing endorphins they give with serotonin, dopamine, it, you know, you're going to raise your, your testosterone levels, um, all your hormonal levels are going to raise up massively, and you're just going to get that whole release of, of feel-good hormones, and, and that whole feel-good factor, you're going to look in the mirror after you've trained, especially if you've done some weight training, you're going to feel a bit more pumped, you're going to feel a little bit better aesthetically about yourself, and I tell you, man, whenever I go through times of these horrible times of procrastination and feeling low and I'm thinking, oh, man, I don't even want to get out of bed or I want to do something, but my mind's just not letting me. I'm, I'm looking at my phone and I'm looking at all different other things to do. If I go out for a long run or I get on a spin bike for an hour, you know, long duration cardio, you can do everything. Go for a swim, go for a cycle, anything you want whatever works for you, man, that evil that goes on in that brain, that procrastination, those negative thoughts, they can't, they can't sustain that. They cannot sustain that willpower of you going and smashing out a good workout. You will immediately feel better. Admittedly, this is a bit of a buzz for me right now. I've just come back from the gym. I just hit some deadlifts, hit a hard back day. I'm going to eat and I'm going to hit the spin bike for an hour now. But it works, man. It Friggin works, especially if you get it done early. You you get up and you say, right, 
I'm going to get into the gym early. I'm going to have a good sleep because lack of sleep is no good for, for depression. Um, and that could be added to this list. I'm not going to add it, but take that into account. Make sure you get adequate sleep. Above seven hours a night is, is always good. Anyone below six hours is more susceptible to illness and, and mental health. Um, but I digress. So you get up early, you get into the gym, you hit it hard. I guarantee your day is going to be set up better. Even if it only takes, you know, 30% of your depression off, you're going to feel 30% better and you're going to be more productive in that day. So, so exercise is number one. Um, if you're not sure how to do it, get a coach, an online coach, a personal trainer. If not, you don't even need to. Just go out for a run and just hit it hard, man. Um, number two. Number two. This is a big one. Cold showers. Yes, you heard me right. Cold showers. Now, you might be thinking, oh, piss off, man. Like, I'm not going to do a cold shower. Guys, what I mean by cold showers is actually getting out of your comfort zone. Do anything to get out of your comfort zone. The comfort zone is where dreams and people die. Now, you want, some people want greatness. Some people want to achieve massive things in business. They want to achieve um, a great family. They want to achieve a, a, a big sporting event. It could be anything, right? You want to achieve something. And I hear people saying to me, I'm not having a cold shower. That's just horrible. So you're not willing, think about this for a second, sit down. You're not willing to endure two minutes of, I don't find it painful, but of, of, of discomfort in a cold shower to improve your mental state on a daily basis. Just think about that. If you're not willing to do that, then how do you expect to get any stronger? The only way you're going to get mentally stronger is if you take yourself out of the comfort zone on a, on a daily basis. You have to do that. I mean, on an extreme level, David Goggins always talks about that. Um, it's about not about money. It's not about anything else, but it's a constant psychological improvement. It's about improving that mind all the time. So if you get in that cold shower for two minutes every day, you, every single day you're taking yourself out of the comfort zone and you're going to be that little bit mentally stronger. Not only does it do that, it fires up your central nervous system, it, it, it does all sorts of things. It reduces inflammation, which can cause depression, um, just livens you up as well, man. You feel buzzed. If I have a, a two-minute cold shower, sometimes if I'm brave enough, I'll do five minutes. I'm, like, Whoa, I'm ready to go for that day. So take that into account, guys. Um, taking yourself out of the comfort zone. Maybe you, you do a sport you're not used to. If you're brave enough, and, and I'm not, it's not really my thing, do a parachute jump. Um, just do, take up, go to a chess club, take up table tennis lessons, go, go and do a marathon up to a marathon, uh, flipping quit your job and get a new one that's, that's even tough, like even more challenging. Get out of that comfort zone. That's number two. Number three for me is, is simple, but often overlooked is do something for someone else every day. Give a little bit more. I'm not going to go into too, depth, too much depth about this one, but you see someone homeless on the street. Don't judge them. You don't know what they've been to. Give them, give them some food. You know, I, I'm, I often give them food rather than money. You know, for obvious reasons. We don't know what they're going to use it for, and that, that's not to judge. But I think it's just to be a bit more productive and give them money if you want. But just do something for someone else. Help an old lady across the road. Ring an old friend. Ring a current friend. Ask how someone's day is. Tell someone they look great in the gym. Someone random. Say, man, I've seen you in the gym. You're hitting it hard. You look great. Do you know how much that can make someone's day if you tell them? how great they look. So consider that, guys. When you give a bit more and you're nicer to other people, you feel a lot better about yourself. Number four, don't judge so much. When you judge somebody else, especially when you're depressed, think about this. Just, just keep a check of it. Think about it. You often judge other people a lot. You judge them for the way they look. There's often people you don't know for the way they speak. For something they're doing, you're thinking in your head, oh man, what, what, what a donut, why is he doing that? Or what stupid haircut. Listen, we don't know what they've been through. You don't know that person. Maybe they're suffering as much as you and that's just their way of getting an outlet. So when often when you judge someone else, it's more of a reflection on on yourself rather than on them. So, so think about that, judge a little bit less. Number five is a huge one for me and that is uh, nutrition. Guys, if you've got coffee in your diet, alcohol, um, 
sugar, especially sugar is absolutely horrendous. Think, you know, um, e numbers, wheat, dairy, gluten, etc. Get rid of that out of your diet. It's not going to make you feel any better. It's inflammatory to your body. It triggers issues within the gut. It can feed any fungus or parasite infections, which can cause um, depression. Get rid of all of it. My advice, and there's no one size fits all, because I don't want to have the vegan community coming down on me, but go to a more keto-based diet, paleo-based diet. If you want to push towards vegetarianism a little bit more, fine, but make sure that's not a vegetarian diet that's full of wheat, um, wheat, dairy, etc., and, and, and loads of grains because that's just not going to make you feel any better. And make sure it's a high vegetable diet, really nutrient dense. Try to get some shellfish in there, because if you don't, you're going to not get your omega-3s in, your DHEAs, etc. And make sure that you get some source of protein in. It's really important. Maybe you don't want tons of meat, a little bit of organic meat, wild caught fish would be great. But you'll see a huge change by changing your diet. Also your gut health. Um, look at taking some digesto, digestive enzymes with your food, probiotics in your day, etc. Make sure you've got good gut health so you can digest that food. Again, that's another video altogether. Number six, yoga meditation. We've heard this a million times. And I know most of you that are watching this would have seen other videos, read books. But it's important. I'm not a great meditator. I do do it from time to time. Ten minutes here and there. I find yoga is better for me. It keeps me a little bit more mindful. Um, one one great way to do it is walking meditation. Just go out, headphones in, um, or no headphones in even, and just just walk, 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 walk. Don't take your phone with you. Just take stock of what is around. Look at the trees around you. Look at the people walking past you. Um, reflect a little bit. That's a great way to do things. Um, I'm not a fan of medications. I'm not going to make a recommendation on medications at all. It's not my place, but I don't think it's the answer. There's nobody that has a deficiency in an SSRI, like a deficiency in a in an antidepressant. A deficiency is ob is normally within the body. It's something that we're not producing. Or if you're low on serotonin or dopamine, it could be because of your diet or because of the way your gut health is or some sort of chemical imbalance elsewhere. And we can do these things more naturally. Supplements can be great. If you guys want to know more about supplements that help with depression, leave a comment below. And I can make another video on that. It's probably a little bit too long-winded now. But again, guys, the multi-level approach to beating depression. And when you do all those things, you know, and there is more, socialising is another one. Just being a little bit closer to your family um, and making sure you go out and don't recluse yourself. Don't, don't be um, too introverted. That's often the thing when we're depressed. We want to stay inside ourselves more and not, not interact. And, and for hundreds of thousands of years... With Bill and Connolly's interacting, sitting around fires, talking, chatting, and we removed from that now. We can work and do everything from home. So that, that's another one that I'm going to add in as a little bonus on the end. So guys, that multi-level approach is key. And um, please leave any comments below. I'd love to know your stories. Love to know some feedback on the video. And um, it really helps me to, to get more videos out when I see you guys interacting with me. Please subscribe. Um, leave a like below. Leave a comment again. And uh, check my website out. Check me out on Facebook, um, Conquer Wealth, and Instagram, Louis Lepke Latuka. All right, guys, peace out. Take care.